is BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. The Crosstown Showdown has shifted to the south side of Chicago. It's a gorgeous day for baseball and the 69th installment of this interleague matchup. It's the Sox and Cubs, Jose Contreras against Randy Wells. We'll have the game for you in one hour's time right here on Comcast Sports Day. Good afternoon, everyone. We are escorting you to that ball game. Welcome to BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. I am Pat Boyle, joined by former Cub Todd Hollinsworth and former Sox great Bill and Bill Melton. And guys, we wondered last week, uh, the first two games uh, of this installment, if it would jumpstart either club. Well, we saw the White Sox go 4-2 and two since the walk-off last Thursday on the north side. And we saw the Cubs for a while take care of business against Cleveland and then lose four straight. Lord, they, they can't seem to put a week or two together of good, solid baseball, Todd. Well, that has been the Cubs' problem this year is inconsistency. I think it kind of wraps this team up all together. Yesterday, you get some offense and uh, uh, not the best of pitching performances from Ted Lilly. Probably his worst outing of the year, and he'd even tell you that. Unfortunately, that has been the problem for this Cubs team, inconsistency. Hopefully that they can come in here to the south side, find a spark, if not from the crowd, but being back home in Chicago, uh, and get rolling again. And on the flip side, Bill, you know, since that walk-off, a, a, a defeating loss uh, on the north side, they've won now the next two series, taking care of Cincinnati on the road and then coming back here against a very good Dodgers ball club. You know, at the time, I didn't think it would jumpstart either team, but I leaned more for jumpstarting the Cubs because they came back in a dramatic way and they carried on for three or four days. I think for the White Sox, it has a lot to do with interleague play. We've always been very successful with the exception of 07 in interleague play. I don't know why it is, but I think the White Sox are, are kind of like, they're, they're like this. I, I feel for Todd in his first full year that he has to talk about a club where one day you feel good for three days and the next three days we're sitting there complaining about our teams, but it is what it is. We're kind of in this mix of bad right here where we're going to have to look towards August, September to figure out where everybody's going to be. If you feel for Todd, you should probably feel for Lou Pinella. I just he, felt for him. <laughs> okay. Because right now, you know, when you lose, everything is magnified. And one of the storylines coming into this, has Lou lost his fire? Do you see that as a problem? Absolutely not. I don't think Lou has lost his fire for one second. Now, he's moving on in his career. He's getting older in life, as we all are. Things change. People change. Philosophies change. But you know what? This offense has struggled. There has been problems in the bullpen. There, there have been issues that are bigger than Lou, and yes, he's the head of this team, but he cannot go out on that field. He cannot grab a bat. He cannot perform any longer. He can change the lineup around all he wants, but until these guys really, for me, start hitting with runners in scoring position, start having shutdown innings in the bullpen on a more consistent basis, they're going to continue to be a 500 ball club. And that is certainly the problem in Atlanta and Detroit the last few days. Time now to check in with both clubs. We begin with the Cubs and Gail Fisher. And Gail, one of the subplots coming into round to the crosstown is Lou Pinella's fire and his status here for the final year of his contract next season. Yeah, it seems to be in some question lately, Pat. Obviously, there's been a lot of criticism of, of Lou Pinella for not showing enough fire, which some people are interpreting as not caring or that he's given up. Pinella has said that can't be farther from the truth. He still has a lot of passion for baseball. He says he thinks people think he needs to act the way he acted perhaps 20 years ago, but he's 65 years old and he feels this new approach of being calmer and, and not kicking and screaming so much is the better approach. He feels that as you get older, you also get smarter. But with the, uh, I guess, perceived uh, lack of fire or, or passion out of Lou that, that fans and some critics have had, they're also wondering if Lou is going to be back next season. And uh, Lou says that he is signed through next season but won't really elaborate more than that. So it, that's open for speculation on, on why he won't just confirm whether or not he fully believes he will be here next year. Even Ozzie Guillen said, oh, we can't lose Lou Pinella just yet. He's the face of baseball. If I'm the face of baseball, baseball is in trouble. <laughs> I didn't say anything. All I said is I'm signed through next year. I didn't say anything about anything else. It's an, it's a nun story. I, I don't know why uh, all of a sudden this becomes an issue. I'm, I'm signed through next year, and, and that's the end of it. Do you, think, do you think it's fair or understand why people keep questioning your 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 fire? Your I've got as much fire as I ever have. I hurt after losses. Uh, I uh, I care about my players and how they play and how the team is performing. But I just don't see the correlation between me going out there 
and uh, trying to sell Aquafina products, <laughs> arguing with umpires, uh, or yelling and screaming ain't going to change anything. I, I just don't see it. I don't see the correlation between that and, 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 and the club playing any better. You want me to put on a show for the fans? One of these days I'll put a real nice show and I'll tip my cap and that'll be the end of it. I mean, if you all want a show, we'll give you a show one of these days. The problem is, is that the league office will be ready to suspend me for a few days and, and I, I, I don't know what, what good that'll do. I, I just don't know. I, you, you, I, I don't know. I, you, 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 you. I'm 65 years old. I, I think what you all want me to do is have a heart attack on the damn field. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's really what you all want me to do, is have a nice heart attack on the field and, 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 and be carried away. We definitely don't want that ha to happen, Lou. Now, news came out yesterday that Giovanni Soto tested positive for marijuana during the World Baseball Classic. Soto said he was embarrassed and that he's known about it since April. We talked to him a few minutes ago, and he said that he's sorry and that he just wants to move on and get back to playing baseball. Pinella has come out and said he didn't know anything about it, and had he known, he would have encouraged his catcher to come out and say something about it a long time ago. He feels like it's weighed heavily on his mind and has affected his performance. I have smoked dope one time in my life. It didn't do a damn thing for me. Okay, and I never tried it again. And I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm fortunate because of that. Uh, but a lot of people do. You, you can buy it in California <laughs> from a pharmacy. Uh, what do I know? Uh, I, I do know that young people make mistakes at times and uh, uh, they learn from mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life personally, and I've learned from them. So how am I going to, I, 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 I read his comments. Uh, uh, he, he, he knows that what he did is wrong, and, and now uh, he, he said he was embarrassed and sorry about it, and it's over with. It's an issue as far as I'm concerned. All right, so I will just move on then to the Cubs starting lineup for the day. now. Pinella has said that he wanted to give Milton Bradley a couple days rest, but he's got him back in the lineup today. Uh, it's because he seems to hit Contreras well, and he's trying to give Ryan Terrio the day off as you look at who he's got here. Soriano leading off Fukudomi. Bradley Lee Hoffauer is your DH. Jake Fox, Fontenot playing second. Soto will be catching, and then Blanco is playing shortstop. So Terrio with the day off here. Lou doesn't have a whole lot of options. He does have Ryan Friel back, though, as far as if he needs bench players for later, but going with Bradley, he says Milton has been struggling, yes, but uh, they're working with him and, and trying to get him back on track. So that's going to do it for the Cubs side of the story for now. I'll have much more came, coming up later in the show, but Pat, let's send it back to you. All right, Gail, thank you very much. We'll check in with you in just a bit. Let's talk about Giovanni Soto for just a second. Uh, he's known that he tested positive uh, for marijuana since mid-April. Do you think that is the reason why he struggled the first few months of the season? No. I disagree. I, I honestly, I believe he struggled because he's probably feeling the pressure of what he did last year out on the field. I think that he has gotten himself into a hole early in the season and he's been trying to dig out of it. Uh, if that was so concerning him, if it was weighing on his mind, he would have come out with it a lot sooner. He's a grown man who understands what he did and the, and the consequences that come with that. And if it was bothering him that badly and he felt like it was affecting his performance, I think it would have been in his best interest to bring it out that much sooner. And because it didn't, I can't believe that it was really bothering him that much. And I think he was probably more concerned with how he was performing on the field uh, offensively than uh, the marijuana test. Lou was joking around that everybody wants to see him go rant and rave out there and, and keel over. It's questioning whether or not he still has the fire. Bill, you, you experienced this. You've watched it with Ozzy. Even last year, we saw him go through that up and down where you know, he questioned if they were hearing his voice. Yankee Stadium, I used to watch Lou Finella go up there one way and break every light in the thing. Just and here's a 300 hitter. No, I think these guys have a little bit too much pride in themselves. You can't be in World Series. You can't win World Series and be a part of something. Ozzy with two big World Series. Lou winning in Cincinnati. This is a guy that has too much pride, both of them do, to say I have no passion for a game that I love. 
I, I just think that's a wrong characterization of it all. I think both these guys have way too much pride. Yeah, their ball clubs are struggling a bit. They feel it. doesn't mean they have to express it every day on the field. Well, a lot of people question whether or not the White Sox would be able to respond after that tough uh, walk-off Thursday at Wrigley Field. Let's check in with the Southsiders' perspective and bring in Chuck Garfine. Good afternoon, Chuck. How you doing there, Pat? You know, if it's true that Lou Pinella is, you know, frustrated about the job, feeling the weight of managing, uncertain about his future, I can tell you this, that Ozzie Guillen can certainly relate. I spoke with Ozzie before the game about this and asked him, you know, about the Lou story, and he says, you know, being a player is tough in the majors, but being a manager is even tougher because as a player, you only have to worry about yourself. As a manager, you have to worry about yourself. 25 of your players as well as coaches, and and he says this job, it's a good job, but it's not always a fun job, especially when you're struggling. So has Ozzy himself thought about walking away? You bet. I was thinking the same way yesterday, doing the game. <laughs> I, I swear to God, you can ask my bench coach. And I told Joyce, man, this is boring. I mean, uh, sometimes you get that way. You know, sometimes when your team not playing well and the things don't go your way, if that happened with a player, that happened with a coach. Uh, I had something in my mind yesterday. I, th I was thinking about all day long. You know me. I mean? Uh, you know I me. Mean? How easy to be a fan when your team winning? How easy to be a, f a, a manager when your team winning? How easy to be a baseball player when your team go right? How easy to own the ball club when everything is perfect? You know I me. Mean? It's so easy when you win, but when you lose, that's when you got to stick up and and to see go deep in your heart and your guts and your brain to see how much you love this game or, or really you're a true fan or you really you know what I mean you really feel for this game or you feel for your ball club uh Louis got the, the right to think about it because when you manage after two, 30 years managing and spend all your life in, in baseball you mean most of the time you think about your family and you have a better life somewhere out, or you know how to deal with the aggravation every day about this job. Well, meanwhile, Alexi Ramirez drew a lot of heat from Ozzy yesterday after Ramirez made those two errors against the Dodgers, and today, Ozzy continued saying that seven of Alexi's nine errors this year have been bad errors, and he's questioning his effort. He thinks that Alexi still has the tools to one day win a gold glove, but for now, he is certainly getting some tough love from his manager. Second error of the ball game. I never will criticize my player for narrow by pitch home runs give up home runs but when you you when you don't give me your best effort that know what it work with me I don't care who you are I don't care what you do how much money you make I don't care okay, you're a Hall of Famer if you don't give me your best effort when I see what your effort is gonna be uh, that thing no gonna not gonna work it's not about Ramirez but anybody in my ball club Every time he, he, he put himself down a lot, I benched him earlier this season just because of that. There's one other thing about it. It's not that much time. I don't like he hate me. I don't, I don't care if he hate me or, or love me. But this kid, he had, an unbelievable, he had an unbelievable future. This kid can be one of the best of the game. My job is to get him there. How I gotta do it? We see how I gotta do it. But I learned from that from Bobby Cox. When Bobby Cox told Andrew John right in his face, I did it to you because you're better than that and you're gonna be a superstar. And I think this kid got the same tools to be on. He not played the game right. He got a tough time to play for me. Now, despite the criticism, Ramirez back at shortstop today, Ozzy said at first he was going to speak with him personally about his play, but today he says he's going to leave that up to his coaches. Meanwhile, A.J. Brzezinski not starting today, and that's really for two reasons. One, he caught all 13 innings yesterday, plus Ramon Castro has basically been catching Jose Contreras on a consistent basis. A Castro gets to start at catcher here today. A couple other things. One, the health of Carlos Quinton took some batting today. Uh, some batting practice today. And Ozzy did not sound too confident about the way uh, he's feeling with his foot, so don't expect Carlos Quinton back anytime soon. Although maybe after the All-Star break, that's still uh, the more realistic goal. We'll have to wait and see. And the last time the Sox and Cubs played each other, yeah, it was maybe one of the lowest, certainly one of the lowest points of the season for the White Sox, that walk-off 
uh, hit in the bottom of the ninth inning, and uh, they lose that four, five to one lead. A much different mood in the clubhouse here today for the White Sox, feeling much better after taking the last two series. That's uh, the story on the White Sox side. We'll send it back over to you, Pat. All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Certainly the big win over the Dodgers yesterday uh, gives them some momentum coming into this series. But they did it uh, despite two Alexi Ramirez errors. And you know, it's funny talking to Ozzy in Glendale. I said, you know, Ozzy, a lot of people are comparing Alexi Ramirez saying, you know, he's going to be as good as you in the field. And Ozzy emphatically said, no way. He'll never be. And so far, he's absolutely right. Uh, Alexi makes some of the routine uh, grounders look very, very difficult. Well, that's the, all the frustration with Joey Cora and Ozzy again right there, both of them middle infielders. This is a guy, a young guy, that has to understand that, you know, guys running from home plate are going to be busting down to first base. You have to anticipate it. I don't care if the score is tied or if you're in the 14th inning or you're in the second inning. The guy leaving the box is going to haul down to first base. you got to get the ball and you got to release it. So I think it's more about his mannerisms. After the play, the last of days ago, like I bobbled and I still can't get him. He's got to anticipate a little bit better, and I think that's what Ozzy's talking about. Time for our first break here on BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. Coming up later in the show, we'll have the special relationship between Bob Renly and his son, Michael. Plus, the big hurt digs in. Uh, he digs into the batter's box for another interview with Mark Burley. Uh, we'll find out from the Sox ace. He talks about his first career home run and the one thing he wants to accomplish before he retires. And later, Gail Fisher shows us how Cubs outfielder Reed Johnson likes to spend the dog days of summer. Cubs pregame live is brought to you in part by Menards. At Menards, you'll find big lumber yards, big selection, and big savings. Save energy and money with a Larson Storm Door from Menards. The Brookfield Midview model features Screen Away, just $157. The Lakeview Easy Vent with Screen Away and Solid Brass Hardware is $269. Update your home with Pella windows and patio doors. Viewed to be the best, they feature aluminum clad exteriors in 10 colors, clear pine interiors, low insulated glass, and are Energy Star rated. Right now, all special order windows and patio doors are on sale. Save big money at Menards. Chicagoans love their pizza. That's why you come to Giordano's, some for 30 years now. We use only the finest ingredients to make Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, our equally famous thin crust pizza. Plus salads, pastas, sandwiches, and more. Come on into Giordano's and celebrate 30 great years with us. Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. We made it good, you made it famous. Performance now is all about logic. That some cars cost as much as $1,500 to maintain is one thing. That others cost even more is quite another. That a BMW costs you nothing to maintain defies all logic whatsoever. And in turn, makes it the most logical choice of all. Performance now is the 3 Series. Lisa BMW 328i for $349 a month until June 30th. Every morning, catch up on everything happening in Chicago sports with Sports Rise. It's the perfect way to start your sports day. Sports Rise, every morning, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Guests on Cubs Pre-Game Live receive gift certificates to Harry Carey's legendary Italian Steakhouse. Located in Chicago, Rosemont, and Lombard. It's a perfect afternoon for baseball on the south side, 72 degrees, not a cloud in the skies. The Sox and Cubs have each won 34 games apiece in this interleague series, and we'll see who has the upper hand later this afternoon. You can see all the action in one hour's time right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And welcome back to BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live, joined by the greatest White Sox hitter of all time, not Bill Melton, he is the one and only Frank Thomas. And Frank as we get ready for this one, granted we're in American League Park, but when when you guys would get ready for interleague play, would pitchers on your team come up to you, say like a Mark Burley, and say, all right, Frank, what pointers can you give me when I get back into the batter's box here for the first time in a long time? Well, they always, the one thing they didn't want to do was embarrass themselves. So it was just one of those things where we always wanted to make sure that they just really stay focused and don't get hurt because we need them to pitch the ball game and not worry about their bat. Well, one guy that probably listened to that advice a little bit was Mark Burley. He came 
through two weeks ago with his first career homer. That's just one of the topics that Frank covered when he sat down with the Snoxy. I'd like to win another World Series, but I think on a personal goal, uh, to try to win a gold glove. You know, it's always been a, uh, you know, it's one of my goals is to go out there and field my position and get outs. I mean, it's very easy outs when to sit back to you. So. Uh, you know, on a personal level, I just like to have a gold glove sitting in my house uh, when I'm retired. I'm going to back you up on that one. I think Mark Burley deserved a gold glove a long time ago. But it seems like in American League, they always pick the same pitcher over and over and over. I've seen you make so many kick saves like a goalie, like a hot goalie, and make incredible plays. Hopefully, this is your year. Yeah, I think I have a chance. I think, obviously, uh, like you said, Kenny Rogers and Messina's retired, and they're the ones that's, uh, you know, won it for the last 20 years. So uh, it's going to be a new winner this year, I think, is the two main guys that, that that's won it every year is out of here. So hopefully, uh, I just can't go out there and put too much pressure on myself and, and screw up and make an error because then, well, then my chances will decrease. Okay. As a veteran leader on this team, going into the late of August, 1st of July, what does this team really need to do to, to be contenders to win this division? We need to be more consistent. We go on these little, you know, win five out of six, five out of seven games, and then we go out there and lose five out of seven. So I think we need to be more consistent. Do you feel this team needs to make any moves? Do you think any moves going to happen? Because you know Kenny's not one of those that's going to sit on his hands. Yeah, he, he's not going to sit back. I, I think something will probably happen. Uh, Depends how we keep on playing. If we, if we keep struggling, I think he'll trade some of the veteran guys and, and go younger. Uh, but I think if we if we keep playing good and, and stay right where we're at, obviously everybody knows the American League Central's uh, you know, 85, 90 games are going to win this division. So uh, I think if, if we stay in this thing right, right, you know, like we've been playing, I think they'll go out there and, and uh, maybe try to get a veteran guy that we might need a bat or a bullpen guy or starter uh, to make this team better. I really followed this team closely, and I'm seeing a very good mix of, of, of youth and veterans. Do you think? you know, maybe more youth movement or more veteran movement for this team? Well, I think it depends which way. If, if we're out of it, I think he's going to go younger. I think, uh, you know, if you hear Jermaine, Jermaine Dye's name get thrown around, if her Bobby's name get thrown around, I think if we're out of it, I think he's going to go young. But, uh, I mean, I think we've gone young. We brought uh, Pareda. Uh, we brought up back. And so I think we brought some younger guys up that uh, we're doing good in our farm system to, like you said, to mix in with some of these veteran guys, add some more speed on the team, uh, and just have that little different mix. And we've, we've been playing pretty well. Look at this, there's your long ball. Stretch, stretch, stretch. You can put it on the board. Yeah. I just want to know, how does it feel now to hit your first major league home run? Because I watched that game, and I was going to myself, Burley better not hit a home run here, because he yeah. said it the other day while I was talking to him. He said, I might as well go deep this weekend. You did it. If you've seen this last game, that was the real Mark Burley. came out swinging, uh, embarrassing himself. I, I just got lucky. I mean, I, I tell myself, it, I get to 2-2 two, two or 3-2, two, I'm swinging it no matter what comes up there. And I was 3-2 count, and he threw me a high fastball, and I, I just... Before he threw it, I said, I'm, throw, I'm swinging it, whatever. But you got to be proud of it. Because I am. Many big league players to play shortstop, second baseman, that never hit a home run. Mark Breller, you did it. At 38 at bats, and I got what one. What was it feel? I saw you sprinting around the base. Did you realize that you hit a home run? No, I, I hit it good because my hands weren't stinging, which is a rarity for me. Because usually when I hit it, my hands are going numb. So when I hit it, I actually said, I'm going to get a double out of this. So I just put my head down and took off running. And there you have it. One of Chicago's greatest pitchers ever, Mark Burley. You know, man, Frank. And Burley's been the man, certainly in interleague play. 19 and 6 in his career, taking on the National League. But he struggled against the Cubs. 4 and 4 in 10 career starts with a 4.57 ERA. Frank, that was great stuff with Mark. You know, he's at 7 and 2 off to the, the best start ever in his career. He's never going to overpower you with that fastball. But have you seen him in his 10 years in the bigs? Is he getting smarter as a pitcher? To be honest, Mark is one of the smartest pitchers that I've ever played with in the big leagues. And we're speaking 18 years. Um, he's always been focused. He's a trickster. He's one of those guys that knows how to keep guys off balance and not let hitters get comfortable. I faced him a couple of times, and it wasn't uncomfortable at bat because he works so fast. He keeps you keeps you moving, keeps you thinking. So for a guy that's already 88 miles an hour and win all these ball games, he's doing something special. And you mentioned that that he works fast. We talk about that all the time, Bill. Do, are we making too much of that, or, or do you guys as fielders behind him absolutely thrive on it? Well, I didn't go back as a fielder. That's a lot easier to play behind a guy like Mark Burley now as a hitter. The question I would ask Frank. As everybody tries to mess around with Mark Burley, he's got one rhythm, and as a smart hitter like Frank was, you want to step out. But the one thing I've noticed about Mark Burley over 10 years, that doesn't even bother.
out. You're either in his rhythm or you're out of it because I don't know about Frank. Any of the teammates ever talk about that on the bench sometimes when you're facing a Mark Burley? How do you get him out of his game plan? Most definitely. He's an uncomfortable at bat, and you're going to be in his rhythm regardless. He, I don't care if you step out three or four times, he's still going to speed it up. He's a smart, smart pitcher, and nothing phases him. Time now to send it over to our other Comcast Sports that contributor, Doug Glanville. He is with Luke Stuckmeyer. We talked about the American League adapting to the National League. How about the NL adapting to the American League Park, guys? Uh, it's an interesting question, Pat. Doug, you played in both leagues, American League and National League. Are the Cubs at a disadvantage because their team's not built to have that DH necessarily? Well, I think in interleague play, I think the home team generally has the advantage, uh, partly for the fact that not only you have the home cooking, but you also have the rules working to something that you're familiar with all year. I had a chance to play in Texas for a while, and the DH is an interesting you know, idea after being a National Leaguer for a while where you have that extra bat in the lineup. And I think the, the, the manager has to make that decision about when to take the pitcher out without having that natural way to do it through the pinch hitter. Environment. How tough is it for an everyday player to adjust to all of a sudden they only need to go up to the plate, they don't have to run out to the field? Is that a difficult adjustment? Well, it's tough. I mean, you're, you're in a situation where you got to stay loose. And if you're in Wrigley, for example, there's not a lot of places to warm up. So you got to figure it out in the tunnel. If it's, and if it's in April, you're certainly in a, a, a more difficult situation. Well, Michael Hoffbauer has been coming off the bench, so maybe a little bit easier adjustment for him today as the DH. And another guy who may play DH in this series, but today is at third base, is Jake Fox. And boy, has he been hitting the baseball. Yeah, I had a chance to catch up with Jake a little bit earlier, and we talked a little bit about his performance in Detroit. Feel good, you know. I, uh, you know, I got into a little bit of a rhythm yesterday. I, I played three out of the last four games, and it allows you to kind of settle in, relax, and get into a little bit of a rhythm, rhythm, and see the ball a little bit. So I'm hopefully I can carry that into today, and uh, this is a big series here. So hope we're going to need some hits, and uh, hopefully I can come out today and have some good at bats, and maybe get a big hit here or there, and uh, help the team win a little bit. Yeah, well, it looks like you're getting a lot of time just rotating around the field. Is there any one position you feel, you know, more comfortable in, or you know, <laughs> you're just going with the flow? The batter's box is that bad <laughs> answer? Um, yeah, no, I, you know that. That's one of the things. In the minor leagues, I've been playing a lot of positions. You know, they've been moving me all around the field, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully I can just fill in in different spots and help them, help them give a day off here, a day off there, and win some ball games. But uh, really, I'm here to help them hit the ball. And uh, you know, today they put me in the lineup today again, and it's going to be an exciting series. I mean, it's going to be an exciting day, and uh, you know, I'm playing third base today, so hopefully I can get over there, and make some plays, and uh, come in and get a few big hits. But it's going to be exciting, and we're, uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen today. Yeah. Well, I know back in the day when I was playing against the Mets, I grew up in New Jersey. I think uh, one of the key things. I love to beat up on that local team. So was there a little extra spice in there for the Detroit Tigers? Well, you know, I'm new here, so there's always a little bit of extra spice wherever I go. But, uh, no, this is going to be fun. You know, this is going to be my first experience playing in this kind of series. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see what we're made of today. We're coming in here. It's going to be as close to an atmosphere as a playoff atmosphere as you can get. So hopefully we can step up, win a few ball games, and uh, go from there. So how about this series here? Obviously it means a lot to the city of Chicago. And you're just stepping in there now. You're getting a lot of playing time. I mean, where do you feel your, your feelings about this, uh, this series? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it does. It means a lot to this this city. You know, it's always it's always bragging rights, and uh, you know, I'm, hopefully, I can give those Cubs fans the game that they want to have. And uh, right now, I just got to come out and make sure we play every every pitch at a, every, one pitch at a time, every inning at a time, and uh, hopefully, we can come out and have a consistent performance today and come out on top. No question, Jake Fox likes to swing the bat, and he is good at it. Doug, who's he remind you of? Anybody that you played with or saw in your time in the big leagues? Well, I think it's someone a little bit before my time in some respects. Uh, Dean Palmer. He was just a uh, raw power, hit the ball to all fields. He's one of those guys early on to hit the ball straight away to center field. Uh, Fox has a way. He seems to get behind the ball really well and drive the ball. He's got tremendous power. Uh, he keeps to hit the keeps hitting the ball. They're going to find a way to get him in the lineup, whether there's a DH or not. Pat, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Luke, thank you. And thanks to Doug. We'll check in with him a little bit later on in this show. Still to come on BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. We'll check in with our resident bartender, Frank Yo, for the U.S. Cellular perspective. And Reed Johnson shows us how man's best friend can help a player out, even if they've had a bad day at the plate or in the field. And later, the story of Bob Friendly and his son, Michael, how growing up around baseball has fueled Michael's lifelong dream. In Northwest Indiana, the most sacred ground is the football field. But there's another piece of land that means the same, if not more, to Notre Dame's head football coach, Charlie Weiss. It's the headquarters of Hannah and Friends, a foundation the Weisses started in recognition of their daughter, Hannah. We have enough resources to take care of Hannah, but that was one of the points more brought up to me is, you know, what are we doing for anyone else? 
Seven years ago, Charlie and his wife, Maura, decided to embark on a life-altering project that would not only help daughter Hannah, but many children and adults with special needs. We want people to know that these are some of the best people on the planet. We should just learn from them. If we could just learn the lessons that these great people have to teach us, I think the world would be a better place. The Foundation of Charlie Weiss, Sunday night at 4.30 after White Sox Post Game Live, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Spell simplicity. Simplicity. F-E-L-D-C-O. Simplicity. Close enough. Call 866-4-F-E-L-D-C-O. Replacing your old windows, siding, and doors is simple. Just call Feldco for top quality at a low factory direct price. Installed by polite, hard-working professionals. Simplicity. Feldco. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866-4-F-E-L-D-C-O. You know how some people like to re-gift? Yeah, well, a sack of 10 sliders from White Castle should put an end to that. Celebrate our 88th birthday with 10 sliders for only 488. White Castle. So, John, how many sliders are in a 10 sack for 488? I I was told there'd be no math. No math! Celebrate our 88th birthday with 10 sliders for only 488. White Castle. Get cool. I've always been a direct mail kind of guy and uh, just thought I'd step outside the box. And Rana from On Media called on me and they had a great campaign that was affordable and I thought I'd give it a shot and it's been very successful. I recommend that any business other than my competitors use the On Media and uh, just uh, I, I think they're a great company and I'm going to continue using them. Hi, I'm Rana. Let me help you stay ahead of your competition. Call me at On Media. I just heard about the Mediacom challenge. Does your phone company have call waiting? Yes. Three-way calling? Yes. Caller ID? Yes. At no extra charge? No. What about unlimited long-distance calling at no extra charge? Actually, that would be about $55 per month. But with Mediacom, it's less than $1 a day. Well, <laughs> sir, we're not Mediacom. Exactly. Enjoy unlimited nationwide calling for as low as $29.95 a month. Call 1-800-CABLE-TV. BMW Crosstown pregame live. There's Aramis Ramirez taking BP earlier today. Still targeting two weeks from now to return to the lineup from his shoulder injury. Len and Bob will have the call at 3 o'clock. Stocks and Cubs right here on Comcast Sportsnet in high definition. And we're back now with Todd Hollinsworth and Belton Bill Melton. Let's talk about the pitching matchup today, guys. Jose Contreras taking on Randy Wells. And, and Todd, finally, Randy Wells got some run support in his last out and got his first Major League victory. Well, he has been pitching fantastic. Lights out. One bad outing so far in, in his big league, big league season this year. He's been great. Expect more of the same today. Look for him to come in, throw strikes early, and, and be on his game. He has been there. He's coming off his first big league win. Expecting good things from him today. And we take a look at Jose Contreras. You know, he won his first two starts when he came up from AAA. Not a bad outing in, in his last outing in Cincinnati, although he did uh, end up taking the loss. Well, this will be his fourth start, and you're right, the first two, he only gave up three hits in 16 innings. Even though Cincinnati got nine hits, what I looked at, they only gave up three runs, which that's the quality start, but most importantly, no walk. So here's a guy that's going to come right after the Cubs. As long as he's not walking anybody, as long as he's not in trouble, they might have a tough time with him. Not to say they're not going to get hits, but if he's walking people and they're getting hits, that's when he gets in trouble. And when you're in the midst of a losing skid like the Cubs are right now, you want your ace to come out there and be the stopper. It's kind of a lot to ask for a young guy to step into the crosstown situation here with the, the great ambiance that this park will have later on today for him to be the stopper for his Well, but that's his personality. He loves center stage. You can tell that he's here to prove himself and that he has done everything that's been asked of him. Uh, he's come out. He's thrown the ball very, very well. He's bounced back from a bad outing. I mean, a lot of guys don't do that. They, they start doubting themselves just that quickly. He has not done that. He's come out. He comes out with a passion every fifth day, takes the ball, and gives it everything he's got. His big thing is keeping keeping that really sinking fastball, which has got tons of movement near the plate, on the corners. If he's doing that and he's throwing strikes, I expect him to be really effective today. Well, we have yet to reach the uh, dog days of August, although finally the weather has improved here in Chicago, and it's feeling a little bit like summer in the last week in change. Gail Fisher rejoins us now with the perspective of one Cubs player who is handling this dog-eat-dog world a certain way. Take it away, Gail. 
Uh, yes, he is, Pat. You know, baseball can be a grind. It's an everyday sport, and so players certainly relish their off days. Now, with so many rainouts this year, the Cubs won't have many of those for the rest of the summer. But earlier this season, Reed Johnson took advantage of his day off. He spent it at the beach with his wife and with his best friend, someone he has some, a lot in common with. He's never been one to dog it on the field, but he's been known to dog it off the field. One more time. One, one more. When he's not making spectacular catches for the Cubs. What a catch by Reed Johnson! Outfielder Reed Johnson is playing catch with his dog Shooter, an eight-year-old lab that takes after his owner. As you can see from this right here, he likes to get dirty, so I would say that's uh, he takes after his dad in that sense. Johnson first got Shooter when he was playing minor league ball in Tennessee for the Blue Jays. Shooter was just six weeks old when Reed met him at the Breeders, and it was love at first sight. And I knew once that uh, I stepped foot in, you know, in the backyard there that um, he, he was going to come home with me. So we, uh, he actually stayed there. We left on a road trip, and uh, when I came back, I got him and. And, uh, you know, my, my wife and I have been taking care of him ever since. And for eight years, Shooter has been with Reed for every step of his baseball career, from the minor leagues to the majors. He's logged thousands of miles on the road. So he hops in the car, and he's kind of been uh, acclimated to that and uh, been acclimated to hotel rooms and things of that nature. So there's, you know, quite a few hotels on the road that we stay at that allow dogs to. So uh, whenever we get a chance, he, he's coming out for sure. You know, he's been uh, to New York City, one of my first road trips, uh, playing the Yankees, and uh, stayed in the Plaza Hotel. So he's, uh, he's just kind of snotty, but... <laughs> but uh, he's lived the good yeah, life. Yeah, he's living, living the big league, big league dream. And so too is Johnson, who's enjoying his time on the north side, a fan favorite for his tenacious defense. Well, what has it meant to you, you know, to have a dog? Just I know people have strong bonds with their dogs, but what has it meant to you, just with your career, even just someone to come home to? And oh yeah, I mean it's uh, you know everyone always says that you go. You go 0 for 5 and make a couple errors and, and have a bad game and you come home and your dog's freaking out and that, and really excited to see you and uh, whether it was a good game or a bad game, he doesn't care. So it's, uh, he's been a pleasure to have and we love him for sure. And while dogs usually take after their owners, Johnson sees at least one trait Shooter has developed from one of his Cubs teammates. I'd say he's got uh, Ted Lilly's stubbornness. You? No. <laughs> hmm, maybe not, but Johnson trains him well. Reed considers Shooter a member of the family and someone who's helped make him a better baseball player. I mean, there's so much failure in the game, and there's so many ups and downs throughout a season. You need something like that that calms you down. And, uh, you know, I have a, a good group, a good family uh, behind me, and, and my wife, and my mom and dad, and, and her parents as well, and uh, that stay positive. And uh, he's just a uh, another addition to that. And after a good day at the beach, it's time for this family to head home. It's the toughest life ever. Along the lakefront, Gail Fisher, Comcast Sportsnet. All right, buddy. And uh, my dog Oliver, by the way, making a cameo appearance in that piece. He was the really well-behaved dog. Unfortunately, Reed Johnson went on the disabled list a couple of days ago with a, a bad back. Ryan Friel, of course, now uh, called up back from the DL for the Cubs. Shooter, by the way, went on the DL last summer. He tore his ACL at the dog beach. So both these guys know what it's like to try to come back from injury. One more note, Pat, speaking of recreational activities. Two guys on this team we know are very fit, Ryan Dempster and Ted Lilly. And instead of taking a cab or driving to the ballpark today or even taking the L, both of them rode their bikes from their home up north near Wrigley Field all the way here to U.S. Cellular Field. They said they rode along the lakefront, took them about 40 minutes. I think it's about a 10, 12 mile trip. So I'm pretty impressed with those two riding their bikes to the ballpark today. Hopefully they get home okay, though, as Dempster is pitching tomorrow. Pat, you, Melty, or, or Holly, ride your bikes to the ballpark today? Gail, oddly enough, that's
that's exactly how we, we came to work on a bicycle built for three. And they already have a wager going. Whoever loses has to pedal home, right? Well, I, you know, I brought, I brought Bill over today in my limo, uh, the Yellow Cab Company. <laughs> I look at it this way. You know how you go full cycle in life? When you get on training wheels as a kid, I'd have to get on training wheels to get here. I don't think they allow that. We're actually going to drive home in style thanks to BMW uh, and BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. Still to come on the show, we'll have our four analysts weigh in with their keys to a Cubs and or Sox victory on this day. And we'll profile the special relationship with Bob Bradley and his son. Michael Bradley is the catcher for the Cubs affiliate in Peoria. Bob tells us why he's not looking forward to the day he has to call one of Michael's games. And as much faith and as much confidence as I have in Michael, he's going to fail at times. And I don't want to be in the booth and have to be put in a position where I either criticize my son or become a hypocrite and don't do my job. Good start. Good start. CSNChicago.com is giving you exclusive access to your favorite Chicago sports team with blogs, expert analysis, special behind-the-scenes videos, and more. All from your favorite Comcast Sportsnet personalities. Only on CSNChicago.com, a fan's best friend online. This is Sheila. She told us she wanted a laptop with fast processor, big screen, and something to cut video. For under $2,000, we told her, you find it, you keep it. I'm a filmmaker. This is a fast processor. For video editing, that's going to help you a lot. For under two grand, this is the best Apple. It only has two gigabytes of RAM. Let's keep looking. Firewire, webcam, USB. Oh, look, this laptop has everything. <laughs> it's a wrap and a PC. Money laptop. Ha-ha. <laughs> I'm a PC and an artist. you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Discount Tire Company. Low prices, more choices. Discount Tire. Nights at 11, the Monsters take over Comcast Sportsnet's late night with a special one-hour encore of Monsters in the Morning. Catch the very best interviews and hottest sports topics from the morning show. Monsters in the Morning encore, weeknights at 11 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. We're back at U.S. Cellular Field. Roger Bossert's crew putting the finishing touches on the diamond. Sister Hazel is playing for the crowd that is arriving here at U.S. Cellular. We're 18 minutes away from first pitch here at Brandy Wells and Jose Contreras. You can see all the action right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And we're back on BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. We have some great father-son relationships on both sides of town with Kenny Williams, the GM of the White Sox. Both of his sons, Kyle and Kenny Jr., were drafted into the White Sox organization in 07 and 08, respectively. And we've got another father-son relationship going on the north side. For that story, we send it over to our Luke Stuckmeyer. Hey, Luke. Uh, thank you, Pat. You know, Bob Brenly was celebrating Father's Day just last weekend, but his Father's Day present came a few days earlier. You know, one of the drawbacks to being a manager, a coach, and now a broadcaster in the major leagues is that Bob didn't always get to see his son Michael play his Little League games or high school games. But just the other day, he had a chance to watch his son Michael play in single-A Peoria for the Cubs, and it was a real treat. Like a natural. He looked like he belonged on a baseball field. Since he was just a little guy, Michael Brenly has dreamed about the big leagues. Dreamed about following in his father's famous footsteps. I would say since the day I was born, you know, it was, I don't know if it was written in my DNA or whatever, but uh, it's always been a dream. You know, my mom would always tell me she would uh, 
throw me balloons and I would hit them when I was young when my dad was on TV just to keep me entertained. But you know, I just always loved it being around him, being around the other guys, just watching baseball, learning from it. So uh, it's, it's been pretty much my whole life. Michael barely remembers his dad's playing career, but he was close by for his time as a coach and manager. In fact, little Mike was a bat boy more than once. He must have worked bat boy for 30 games that spring. It seemed like he was there every day in uniform. And at the end of spring, I asked Dusty, uh, I went to a trophy shop. I don't even know if Michael knows this, but I bought the trophy that said uh, Cactus League number one bat boy and gave it to Dusty and asked him to present it to Michael. And uh, he was thrilled. I probably just ruined something for him. I think he still believes he won that. <laughs> Today, Michael is earning his awards. Taken by the Cubs out of UNLV in the 36th round of the 2008 draft. He plays catcher for the Peoria Chiefs. And on this rare day off for Bob, it's a chance to see his son play in person. It's kind of hard to separate, you know, watching your son play from watching a ball game and kind of analyzing it, like what I do for a living. But uh, when he's involved in the play or when he's at the plate, uh, I'm still dad. You know, God, I'm rooting hard and uh, aching hard when it doesn't go well. And uh, I think that's the same thing for any parent, no matter what you do for a living. Uh -oh. Yeah! That a boy! Boy. <laughs> That's the way his mom used to hit him. I don't like to walk around, you know, I'm bigger than you, I'm better than you. I just want to be one of the guys, you know, since I was young, I never wanted to be treated any differently or given any extra, you know, anything. I just want to work hard, do what I can to, to show that, you know, I'm a player on this team. I'm not just here because I have a last name. Roughly midway through the season, Michael is hitting 277 with 22 runs batted in. Bob made the majors by the time he was 27. Michael is still only 22. Does he want to beat you there? Well, I hope so. I mean, I'd like to think that's his goal. Uh, but if it takes till he's 27 or 28 or 30 or whatever, as long as he's still enjoying what he's doing, it feels like he's making progress and getting better and, uh, uh, you know, doing something that he loves, you know, just keep chasing it. You know, it doesn't matter if you beat me or not. Uh, I don't get a trophy for that. <laughs> So the fairy tale ending to this little story is pretty obvious, isn't it? We have Mike making his major league debut at Wrigley Field in a couple years behind home plate. And there's the proud dad, Bob, calling all the action on Comcast Sportsnet in the broadcast booth. Uh, maybe. Uh, I have thought about this in the past, and I'm almost to the point where I think I'd have to leave the booth. I don't know that... I don't know that that would be fair to him. I don't know that would be fair to the fans, and uh, certainly it wouldn't be fair to me. You, you have to be objective as a broadcaster, even a hometown announcer. You have to call the game with what people are seeing with their eyes. And as much faith and as much confidence as I have in Michael, he's going to fail at times. And I don't want to be in the booth and have to be put in a position where I either criticize my son or become a hypocrite and don't do my job. So the easiest thing to do would be to get a bleacher ticket and watch until he was done playing. And then hopefully at that point they would take me back and I would resume my broadcast career. And speaking of broadcasting, when it comes to father-son advice, this is a two-way street. He sung the uh, seventh inning stretch the other day and I was sitting with a couple buddies at our apartment and I texted him and gave him a rough time. I don't like to let him get away with too much. He gets a big head, so if he wears an ugly shirt or something, I'll keep him in his place. So, Are you faster than your dad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he says he could have taken me when he was my age, but I have no doubt I could beat him in a race. I got to draw the line right there. Um, back in the day, I think I could outrun him, but, but he is a lot faster than he looks. I'll give him that. <laughs> Michael says they talk after every game, sometimes about baseball, but not all the time. And no matter how things play out here, the Brenleys are clearly a winning combination. Well, I'm very proud of what he's done and what he's, you know, what he's grown into. Personality-wise, we're a lot alike. I try and, you know, be just like him because, uh, you know, your dad's your biggest fan, obviously. And, you know, he's one of the best guys I've known in my life. He's taught me a lot, and I love him to death. And if I can grow up to be something like him, that'd be amazing. 
make sure we thank Joan, Bob's wife, for coming through with some of those pictures of Michael when he was just a little boy. Bob's going to get a chance to watch him play again in July. He's looking forward to it. And right before their All-Star break, Pat, Michael had a couple three-game hits. He's just starting to swing the bat hot this season. We'll send it back over to you. All right, Luke, great story for Michael and for Bob. Hopefully, Bob will have to make that decision very soon about having to exit the booth when Michael gets called up to the show. Back with Todd Hollinsworth and Bill Melton. And, uh, Todd, last week at Wrigley, we saw a couple of your sons up there when you were singing during the seventh inning stretch. Uh, do you hope as a father that they follow in your footsteps to play this game? Well, absolutely. I want them to enjoy life, to love life, to live it to the fullest. And wherever, wherever it leads them, if it's ice hockey, let it be ice hockey. But I support them, and I will be there for them, and I will do whatever I have to do to be there and, and support them and whatever they need for me so that they can reach their dreams. Bill, your kids are grown, but did your son, did he ever dabble in baseball, try to follow no, your you footsteps? Know, he never did. He wound up being a pretty good athlete. He was a walk on a UCLA in volleyball. That's because we lived at the beach, man. There was nothing else to do. No, I don't think he wanted to compete against his dad. I never pushed him. He wasn't one of those kids that hung out in the clubhouse. He could have if he wanted, but he never did. He, he took the alternate. He started playing the guitar, and, you know, he liked the beach, but he was a pretty good athlete. I bet you were popular around the fraternity house when you'd stop by UCLA and tell the old I was story. a surrogate father. I can't tell the stories over the air. I was a surrogate father for a lot of guys who didn't have their dad around in L.A. Trust me, someday, if you ever meet him in certain watering hole, ask him about those stories. Speaking of watering holes, there's no question White Sox and Cubs fans are passionate about their teams. But they celebrate getting ready for ball games in different ways. Cubs fans, yeah, they go to their favorite watering hole in Wrigleyville. White Sox fans, they do it a little differently. They take part in the, the great traditional honor of tailgating. Our resident bartender for Frankie, Frankie O from Harry Carey's, he took part in this tradition earlier today. Last week I was checking out the tailgating outside of Wrigley Field and I just ended up in a bar. A nice bar at that, I might add. Today I'm on the south side, and I think things here are going to be just a little bit different. Ah, uh, Bob Fest, are you kidding me? Now this is what I call tailgating. Are you, are you kidding me? Uh, so, ladies, what you got cooking? Pork. Pork. Pork? Yep. Uh, Big pork chops. Yep. You might not have a little extra, do you? <laughs> we probably would. What do we got going on? We got some Drago shish kebabs from Hagwish. I had to go all the way out to Hagwish to get these. Smell that. Oh. We got some uh, kebabs here from Tez Imports in Maryville, Indiana. So you came all the way from Maryville here to party? Crawford, yeah. yeah. Indiana, yeah. Lakes in Four Seasons. Do these guys tailgate like this on the north side at all? Does oh. That happen? oh, no. They can't do that. Uh, I got to take it for the team here. All Cubs fans. So I got to show them how to do this. There you go. When uh, we come here. There you go. And I think you're doing it the right way so far. Job. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Now, this is what I'm talking about. It's time for some Frankie O fun. Go for it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> What do you got going on? We got two grills going on, and then we got pound of food here. We got the sausage. We got the green peppers. Puerto Rican rice. Puerto Rican rice. A little bit of everything. Uh, if you're making a checklist for a tailgate party, what's the thing you need to have first? Beer. Beer. Then food. Then beer. Then chips. Then beer. I'm noticing a trend here. <laughs> and maybe a little ice. Well, it's almost game time, but you know what? There's still some people over here I think need my help, so I'm going to go do it for them, all right? Outside the cell, it's Frankie O for Comcast Sportsnet. All right, Frankie O, from one party to another, Sister Hazel's playing. The folks are settling into their seats here at U.S. Cellular Field. We're about eight minutes away from turning it over to Len and Bob. Keep it here on BMW Crosstown Pre-Game Live. <laughs> And now, it's time for the Stay in the Game Hold of the Day. Brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. Here's a look at our Just for Men Hair Color Stay in the Game Hold Spotlight. In Wednesday's victory over the Dodgers, Octavio Dotel struck out the only batter he faced to pick up his 10th hold of the season. He is second on the team to Scott Linebrink. Meanwhile, Carlos Marmol leads the Cubs with 14 holds. That's good for second in the National League. The Giants' Jeremy Affelt leads the league with 15 holds. Just as these middle relievers keep their team in the game, you too can stay in the game with Just for Men Hair Color.
been a while since I needed a tie. Dad, you're gonna get this job. They'll be lucky to have you. I know it. Just for men. In five easy minutes, targets only to gray to help bring out your best. How'd it go, Dad? Honey, I think I'm gonna need more ties. Yes! <laughs> Just for men. How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. With the economy being the way that it is, we need all the help we can get. Steak and Shake is great. You can afford it. It totally fits the budget. You don't have to worry about breaking bank. The food's easy on the pocketbook. And it's filling me up. I mean, look at me. You have a pocketbook? Pocketbook checkbook. Four meals under $4. Half-price happy hour. Kids eat free on the weekends. That's value you'll want to devour. Do you have a purse? I don't have Do a purse. Do you have a purse? No, I don't have, have a purse. purse. I, I have a wallet. Steak and Shake. Life needs flavor. Something about this heat. Yeah. We're thrifted out. Right Don't just trust anybody to cool you down. Those fellas sure wear fast. Call Four Seasons Heating and Air Conditioning at 866 Four Seasons. For all the right reasons, Four Seasons. The city bragging rights on the line. We're still going with Johnny Dank. They're going with Ryan Dempsey. That ball hit hard way back. You can put it on the board. Yeah. He gone. Pull the string on it. He gone. It's the suicide squeeze, and it works. And all of a sudden, one swing of the bat, and it is a 5-4 ball game. And this game is tied at 5. And there's a base hit. Just minutes away from round two of the Crosstown back on BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. Time for our big four analysts to give us their keys to a victory today. Bill, you lead off for us. I'm going to start off with get defensive. I think the ball club needs to start catching the ball a little bit. So get defensive, man. You're putting the pitchers in too much of a hole. I think it's offense, offense, offense. White Sox broke out the other night. They've been swinging ever since. The Cubs had it rolling against the Cleveland series. So if they can do what they were doing that series, you never know. Late game heroics for the Cubs today. I think it's going to be a close ball game early. If they, if they play mistake-free baseball late in the game and they get that big hit, I think they're going to win this one. Doug, what do you have for it? Well, I think the key is keeping the ball in the stadium. I mean, this is a field that turns the game around quickly with the three-run home run. So I think the team that keeps the ball in the park is going to win. All right, quickly, one player you think is going to have a breakthrough game. Today. Well, I'm going to go with Jermaine Dye swinging the bat really well now when he starts hitting the ball well. He hits a lot of home runs. I'm going to be a front runner. I'm going to go with Paul Canerco. Three home runs in three games. He's swinging a hot bat. I'm going to do the same thing. Jake Fox, he busted out yesterday. I'm going to see some more today. I'm on the Jake Fox bandwagon. He's looking good at the plate, so let's see his game today. All right, sounds good. We'll see all of you guys on the post-game show. That's going to do it for BMW Crosstown Classic pregame live. Len Casper and Bob Brendley have the call next. It's Jose Contreras taking on Randy Wells from the south side. Enjoy the game, everybody, on Comcast sports set in high definition. We'll see you afterwards on the post-game show. So long.